to win, you got to run. If you're at Clinton and you want to win, you've got to run from a position of being an underdog. Because everybody loves an underdog, right? Well, how if you're at Clinton do you get to be an underdog when you've got somebody like Bernie Sanders running against you? I mean, it just doesn't compute, right? Socialist, I mean, there's no way. But now I think you'll understand why this Benghazi stuff was released by New York Times. Do you get it? I'll tell you a couple of stories about fraud. The Bohemian Club. The, as you say, the Bohemian Club? That's where all those rich Republicans go up and stand naked against redwood trees, right? I've never been to the Bohemian Club, but you ought to go. It'd be good for you. Get some fresh air. I know nothing about the Bohemian Grove with Bill. I know about... Once a month, Hillary would go out to Los Angeles. And she did it so regular that it became a bit of an issue trying to, why is she always going? Bill told me that she was going out there, she and a group of women, and she would be a part of a witch's church. And, uh, man, I... When Bill told me that, you could have hit me with a baseball bat. I tried to point out to him. He realized what had happened if that got out. And of course, my job is to make sure it didn't get out. Now, I don't know today if Hillary still partakes in <clears throat> the witch ritual. I, I don't know that I even know what the ritual was. But... For the better part of many years, Hillary would go quite often, whether it was regularly once a month or maybe once every couple of months, she would go out on a weekend simply to be a part of it. The great story here for anybody willing to find it and write about it and explain it is this vast right-wing conspiracy that has been conspiring against my husband since the day he announced for president. You know, it's so sad that when something tragic happens that people, maybe out of a desperate attempt to make sense of the world, try to create conspiracies and, you know, act paranoid and all that. But some of it is not explainable except for people who just want to cause trouble. You let it rub off you. Yeah, you have to. Rose off. How do I put it into words? When Bill became governor, I believe the paycheck for the governor was 28,000 a year. Hardly the kind of money that would get you up into the higher earning bracket. Hillary went to the Rose Law Firm. She, Webb Hubble, Vince Foster, they went there because that gave Hillary, once again, it gave her a vehicle that she could use by Bill being governor, Rose Law Firm being the lobbyist for all types of major industry, which Hillary would facilitate, they made a fortune. You know, Tom and uh, Bill have a lot in common. They both have wives who support them in these uh, efforts that they are engaged in, both uh, emotionally and financially, I might add. Um... The money went to Hillary not to Bill. So when you try to check out Bill and say, well, gosh, he made a fortune when he was governor, certainly made more than 20 something thousand dollars. That's how they did it. They did it through Hillary and the Rose Law Firm. Got them everything they wanted. The people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. So we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> Genetically modified sounds Frankensteinish. Drought resistance sounds really something you want. We cannot let a minority of people, and it's that's what it is, it is a minority of people, hold a viewpoint that terrorizes the majority of people. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. It's no secret that we're going up against some pretty powerful forces 
that will do and spend whatever it takes to advance a very different vision for America. The best way to stop Hillary, let me tell you, there's only one way to stop Hillary. You know, it's not going to be Benghazi. <clears throat> it's not going to be the uh, email scandal. I don't think that'll hurt her. The information I've got that has to do with Vince Foster will carry the day in the end. If Hillary is to be stopped at all, that's what's got to do it. That's why they consider me such a threat. Remember, they've Bill said it that, you know, some reporter asked him who was the worst enemy of the Clintons. He said Larry Nichols in so many words and stuff. There's a reason he says that, because I'm holding the actual files. From the outset, the investigation into the death of Vince Foster has been marred by controversy. At Bill Clinton and Attorney General Janet Reno's insistence, responsibility for the investigation was turned over to the Park Police, even though Foster's death fell within the jurisdiction of the FBI. Not until his death had sufficiently developed into a full-fledged scandal seven months later would the FBI be allowed in. The results of the FBI's investigation, along with the findings of the Park Police and Coroner, were incorporated into a report issued by Special Counsel Robert Fisk. The report, released June 30th, 1994, confirmed suicide as the cause of death. However, a careful examination of key pieces of evidence taken directly from the report itself indicate a number of alarming contradictions inconsistent with the report's own conclusion that Foster took his life. The official coroner's report depicts a large gaping one-inch exit wound located three inches below the crown of Foster's head. According to Fisk, the area surrounding the body at the park was meticulously searched to a depth of 18 inches, but no brain tissue or skull fragments were found. An FBI analysis found none of Foster's fingerprints on the gun, despite the fact the gun was found in Foster's hand. However, the FBI did make one extraordinary discovery. One latent fingerprint was visible on the underside of the right pistol grip, approximately two inches from the base of the grip. This print did not belong to Foster. No attempt was made to determine the identity of the person whose print was found in the gun's hand grip. There's another story that you have, which is the Secret Service memo. Now that's where the Park Police officially notified the White House Secret Service that they had found the body of Vincent Foster. And that version, they say they found him in his car in the parking lot of Fort Marcy Park. And it went so far as to say a 38 caliber revolver was found in the car with him. It went into detail saying that there was a six pack of Bartle and James wine cooters in the front seat. One that had been opened and he drank it, the others hadn't been opened. It said his briefcase was in the back seat. It's in detail. That story, she can't run away from it. I know people say, well, good God, Larry, that's Vince Foster, that's old news. No, that's a death. Statute of limitations does not exist for that case. I'm not saying Bill and Hillary killed him. I'm not saying they had him killed. I don't know. I truly do not know. But what I do know is they moved that body. They moved his body. Then you have to ask why. Why did they move his body? Because where he died would have been under the D.C., Washington, D.C. police. And had that have been discovered, something would have come out and that would have been the mitigating circumstances and that circumstance would have been that Vince and Hillary had a long-standing affair. If that story had to come out with the death of Vince Foster that Hillary was the first first lady in American history to be caught having an affair on the president, I assure you gentlemen, Hillary wouldn't be running for president today. That is why I am running for President of the United States. The people want to know Hillary.
the Hillary that I knew back here in Arkansas. When she was in the Benghazi hearings, when she said, what difference does it make? They're dead. What difference at this point does it make? That's the Hillary I know. And that's the Hillary that we don't want to unleash on America. You know, I don't care about their little things they do. I don't care about who they sleep with, what they slept with. What I care about is our country and what's going to happen to my grandbabies. So therefore, I'm bound, honor bound, as I know Alex is, to try and stop it. That's what we're going to do, one way or the other. We will stop it. You know, we're incredibly close to losing our country, incredibly. And it's more than just Hillary. It's the Congress becoming traitors, turning us. You know, Washington is just a cesspool of traitors. That's why I have a plan that I plan to introduce. And basically, the short version of it, states' rights. Washington has no power at all. It ain't got the power to do any of the stuff it's doing unless we, through our states, exceed that power to them. Where I stand, where you stand, that's the ground you protect, right there. Don't let Washington come get it. Don't let Washington come get it. You take care of it. It's right there in front of you. Say, this is mine and you can't take it. If we do that, we'll be all right. If we don't, generations to come will never see what we've had. Never. That's my story, and I guess I'm sticking to it. Globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding and making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the Info War to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. Alex Jones started his Access TV show in 1995. In 1996, he parlayed its popularity into a terrestrial radio show. The next year, he launched Infowars.com, and by 2000, his voice was carried over 120 AM, FM, and shortwave radio stations. In 2007, he launched PrisonPlanet.tv, where he pioneered producing merging video and radio, a practice that is commonplace today. Now, in Infowars.com is the most popular alternative news website in the world. The Alex Jones channel on YouTube has over 1 million subscribers and over 550 million views. He was the first to put his over 20 documentaries on the web for free. The seminal Obama deception has been seen over 14 million times on one YouTube channel. And now Alex Jones wants to launch the Infowars.com operation into space. Join us in our march toward a peaceful restoration of the republic by going to infowars.com forward slash money bomb we are listener viewer and reader supported infowars.com forward slash money bomb